just good to see it at home. Um, so, obviously in terms of promotion and exposure, it's, in, it's increased massively in terms of that. It was very much started off as a thing just in the estates of London, pretty much, as far as I was aware. Um, and, as you, and you have to bear in mind, again, this is before the days of social media, so you didn't really have that much of an idea what was going on, on the other side of London unless you had family that lived over there, so you were going over there, like, I particularly, throughout my teens, I was in mostly East and North London, because of my living in Old Street, you know what I mean, so, um, that's one key difference, that it's much more of a national and international genre, rather than being something that's just a London thing, and I think that's great. Um, in terms of the actual sound, maybe it's a little bit more polished, but there's still that rawness that I experienced and felt when I was young, so it hasn't got away from that, which is the really refreshing thing, but it has actually added a sort of polished edge to it, if you will, you know what I mean? So, in terms of the actual music, there's been changes over the years. It's gone more melodic, and it's gone darker, and then it's gone towards a more trap music style, whatever that may be, um, and then back around to authentic London street sound, which is the way I'd put it. So, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a journey and it's been continuing, I really think, so it's exciting times, the long way we continue, basically. Um, yeah, it's pretty true, but I think the problem with things like that is to really sort of um, pigeonhole Brian according to race wouldn't really be right because it's not so much a black British thing as it is a working class British thing. I think like it's it's, it's from the estates. It's not it's not because it just happens to be a a, a face. Oh, sorry, a, a genre that you can attach a black face to because that's mostly the faces that you see around here in London, in the estates. That's pretty much it. I think, as I say, to summarise it, yeah, I can understand why people would say that. I would personally say it's much more about the actual areas and the actual um, people within them that made the, 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 the genre rather than the fact that there's black people in Britain that made crime. So, and the other thing is, strengthening that point of opinion is grime has massive bashment influences like the dog plate culture is straight from bashman um, and obviously the clashing thing as well uh, the live performing thing so you could say from that point of view yeah it is maybe the one and I'd say uh, yeah I mean broadly I'd agree with it but I'd say I'd, cautionary is a cautionary agreement it's like it's not really just because it's black people, it's just more we're the ones who are in the estates, and that's why more than anything else I'd say. So, well, yeah, I mean, and the thing about it is, there's an argument that Graham's going the same way, um, with the influence of middle class people suddenly hearing it and wanting to get involved and writing articles about it and putting nights on. And I just think, why be so protective? Just you know, if you know how something started, you can take comfort from that and, and be involved in it. And yeah, you can argue that, oh, but well, we're not making money from it, and we're not we're not owning our own stuff. But in this day and age, you can own your own shit. Like with the internet and the way that social media works, and the way that media in general works, that like you don't actually have to be signed to a major label anymore. You can independently if you have good material and good promotion with it. If you just look at JME and Skepta, that's a perfect example of how independent artists have created their own buzz, their own following, and they're doing their own thing and, and profiting quite nicely from it, do you know what I mean? So I think really and truly it's a bit precious trying to say, oh, we've lost R&B, we've lost 
UK, but whatever it may be, it's not about who owns it, it's about who wants to do it and who wants to do it right, I think. If you haven't got conviction, why should, why should you expect anyone to believe in you? Do you know what I mean? If you don't believe in yourself, why would anyone else possibly believe in you? They're looking at someone that doesn't believe in themselves. You know what I mean? There's like a handful of cases of someone that doesn't believe in themselves, but other people believe in them just because they can see the sheer brilliance just radiating out from the pores. I know one or two people like that, like literally one, I think, who doesn't really believe in himself, but he's incredible, man, and he just does, just needs to realise that he's incredible. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think self-confidence is very important because it comes across in your delivery, like physically it comes across in your delivery. It sounds more atmospheric, more punchy, you know, like it hits you harder and that in turn makes you believe in its source, do you know what I mean? So has this always come with ease, like you've always been less confident? No, 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 no. you have to build it up over time and the confidence comes with as you get better and better at MC and you realise it's becoming easier and easier like physically, that like your mouth is moving without you really forcing it into position, if you know what I mean. Um, so when you start realising that, you relax even more and then it just makes it even better, which makes everything flow even better. So, no, no, it's very much a gradual process. And generally speaking, self-confidence in life is not something you're going to wake up and just think, right, boom, I'm confident now. You've got to build it up gradually, I think. So, yeah, definitely. Like, when I, was, when I was 13, 14, I was nowhere near as confident as I am now. Like, not even anywhere near, like, it's maybe about 25% as confident as I am now, you know? So, that's literally 14 years. That's literally half a lifetime ago, so it's definitely something you build up, I think. Try and error. Simple as that. Try and error. You try. If you if you don't feel it's working, or if people you trust around you say, "I don't think that's working," you just keep trying until you feel comfortable. And then if you get a style, what you want is your own individual style. Hopefully, if you get an individual style that you feel comfortable with, you go with that and just see where it takes you. It doesn't have to be that style for everyone. Maybe you'll expand. Maybe you'll evolve. Who knows? But trial and error, absolutely. You can't be scared to get it wrong. If you're scared to get it wrong, you'll never 